Major cooling of the oceans and mass extinctions during the late Devonian severely affected the stromatoporoid coral reef community, effectively ending their role as the main reef builders in the Paleozoic seas. During the early Mississippian, roughly 345 million years ago, shales gave way to sand deposition in the shallow seas. The resulting sandstones form the rigid central axis of the Thumb region and crop out at Point of Barks and Grindstone City. The stratification and fossils in the scenic rock outcrops in the Marshall Sandstone at Point of Barks provide evidence for a shallow marine nearshore environment with sand waves and migrating dunes, and they comprise the northernmost tip of the thumb. The same rock unit at Grindstone City was once quarried for the production of some of the best millstones in the world. Brines in the pore space of the Marshall Sandstone in the subsurface also provide important materials for the chemical industry. By late Mississippian time, the seas expanded and carbonate sedimentation resumed resulting in the formation of carbonate rocks like the Bayport limestone exposed at the Wallace Stone Quarry. These limestone blocks here along the edge of the quarry contain some interesting features. What you can see here in white along this bed uh, are nodules of chert and layers of chert, a form of microcrystalline quartz. It's significant because these deposits were mined by native people all the way back to Paleo-Indian times, uh, and it was used for making spear points and other tools. The distribution of the different types of chert allows archaeologists to determine how far people traveled and what other Indian groups or native groups that they traded with. Additional evidence for glaciation comes from the distribution of exotic rocks and the grooves or striations created on bedrock and the surfaces of the transported rocks caused by abrasion under the ice sheet. At this site, bedrock striations, exotic rocks, and glacial sediments are wonderfully exposed in the floor and walls of a limestone quarry. The till deposits at this locality were deposited in an extensive lake in front of the melting glacier. We're right on top of the upper limestone bed here at the Wallace Stone Quarry, uh, right again at the contact between the glacial sediments and the sedimentary bedrock below. And sitting right in front of me is a giant boulder of an igneous rock called basalt. It's a rock that comes from lava. It's very ancient, and you can see that it is uh, well over a meter across, and uh, it is cut with a facet and grooves on, on the surface of the rock. This is part of the evidence that it was moved by ice. And where did it come from? Well, we have to go far north of Georgian Bay to find source areas for rocks like this up into the Canadian Shield region. It's part of the classic evidence that uh, an ice age occurred in Earth's past, a concept that rolled around about the middle of the 19th century. Here we've got this giant out of place boulder or erratic uh, within glacial landform and glacial sediment fabrics with the grooves and striations cut on it. Conclusive evidence of glaciation in this region. This map of surface sediments shows the distribution of moraines, related glacial sediments, and in blue, the old glacial lake deposits and beaches that surround the Port Huron moraine near Cass City. The Port Huron moraine rises above the glacial lake plain, marking a point where the ice front stood 13,000 years ago. In addition to lakes, massive multi-channel river systems fed by glacial meltwater also formed in front of the glaciers, depositing sheets of stratified, well-sorted sand and gravel, an important source of aggregate for building materials. This surface sediment map shows where major outwash drainages occurred, with particularly thick deposits forming in the seams that develop between the receding ice margins of the Saginaw and Huron lobes, as is well illustrated.